This is the Lydian spin with Lydian. Okay, no, wait a minute. You're naughty already. All right. You got this. This is going to be a naughty one. This is the Lydian spin with Lydia Lunch, Tim Dahl, and Rachel Mason. Speaking about naughty, honey. We got a... <laughs> There's that laugh oh, again. Oh, fuck. Did we I got just a, fuck it all And she's up? swearing no, no. already. Right. We love it. We got a little bit to talk to you about. You were kind of born into a naughty reality. Totally. Well, we were just talking about that because uh, someone else's dad shared with him our crumb. So I can always be like, well, my parents shared with me Jeff Stryker, you know. And um, What a you beautiful know. <laughs> experience. How old were you when you were exposed to the exposure of Jeff Stryker? Well, that's the funny thing right. is that I had really normal, boring, irritating, fucking conservative parents. Who, who happened I, to. Yeah, who happened to run the biggest gay porn empire the world has ever known. Called and, Circus of Books. Yeah. And so I thought they were squares that my mom was so freaking religious. I had to do all of the terrible Jewish, you know, go to synagogue. I hated it. So my, you know, kosher. Oh my God. She was so actually real. Yeah. And your, but your dad <laughs> was not religious. So no, how the fuck mellow. does that, how, how does that work with, especially uh, with a religious Jewish mom? I mean, I guess it was important that your dad was Jewish, but it yeah. didn't matter if he was an atheist. Totally. You know, I think it's this weird thing. It's a Jewish cultural thing. Like, oh, just marry someone Jewish. Doesn't right. matter. <laughs> Once you yeah, do that. First of all, there's not one kind of Jew. This is something yeah. I've been discussing oh, with various yeah. people. Like, are you Orthodox? Are you religious? Is it your race? Is it your choice? Are you cultural? I mean, totally. you can, just because you you claim you're a Jew, yeah. who the hell knows what that means? No, and and I, do you have to define it? I well, and I know more Jewishy people that are not Jewish. Not Jewish. I'm like, you're so Jewish. Like, oh wait, you're actually not Jewish. Okay. Do you so, feel <laughs> Jewish? You know, it's weird. I I didn't because I hated it so much growing up, and it just was like it was the devil to me. Just the the most synagogue. religion is the is <laughs> yeah. really based upon the devil. I mean, that's why they exist to control our devilish instincts. Totally. No, and it was a very patriarchal bullshit. Men and women, and separate, and, and only men can go on the stage. It was real. Like I guess we turn that shit around. <laughs> but, but what's what's amazing about it is the women who are kind of I know we're way more yeah. adamant about keeping the and it's then they so get crazy. and then they get screwed. Right. Right. No, it's a. Well, it's and Jewish totally, women do yeah. like to screw and get blowjobs, <laughs> as far as I know. Well, of course, yeah. I mean, growing up religious in any form, I mean, one should rebel. Yeah, I guess so. No, I never dated anyone Jewish in my whole life. I was like, all right, if you're Jewish, that's game over. Bye. <laughs> Don't like it. And that's coming from a so-called Jew. You see so-called. Well, it, 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 yeah. that, that's a common reaction. I live for years in Midwood, Brooklyn, which is a huge uh, Jewish community. And historically, it was assimilated, I guess, agnostic, atheist Jews. And then now it's all orthodox. And it's a lot of the people rebelling against their parents. Like, you let go of your roots. It's this is contrary in position. It's like this flip-flop that keeps on going or something. All right, so yeah. you're growing mm-hmm. up in what appears yeah. to be a conservative family with a strict mother, a kind of loosey-goosey dad, not knowing really what they do until what? Your first exposure was Jeff Stryker. <laughs> well, no, I mean, the, the funniest thing was, obviously, I would find my people in high school who were all the queers and the artists and the weirdos. When were you in high school? And was out here in Los Angeles. Yeah, so I went to high school in, in the Valley at a school called Cleveland just a public school, working class school. And I'm sure we all found that artist kids are like 10, you know, smoking cigarettes and doing acid. And those Was my that friends. In, when were you going to high school? Was it the 80s? Oh, 90s. Mm, actually. 90s. Yeah. You graduated when? You newbie. Na- yeah, oh, yeah. No, 96 or okay. 97. I actually oh. forgot. One of those years was oh, okay. when I graduated. Yeah. What were you into then? What, 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 oh, what were your punk. Up- you? I was into you, Lydia. So. How deep? Yeah, no, I, you were deeply into I, me. Ron, was, was I into your Ron. Jeff Striker? Yeah. yeah, no, seriously. Like I actually got somehow, you know, like uh, you know, fake ID to check out, cool. you know, Ron Athey's we shows and, and Vaginal Davis, all this shit out here on the east side, which was already so kind like, of really yeah. not and not completely established, but they were establishing a new form of performance and, totally. and booking things and curating yeah. things. Anything that was like weird, punk, fucked up, awesome, your shit. Transgressive. Transgressive. My shit, not yeah, punk, yeah. still awesome. <laughs> punch, punch rock. Yeah, punch rock. You know, like actually uh, Carla Bazulich, like she was the total queen She's of the scene. She's my favorite vocalist. T- oh I my mean, God, uh, me too. A dragon lady is like, I have to hit, play that song about once a month. Oh my God. She's Geraldine a, Fibbers, yeah. Evangelista. And Ethel Meatplow. So Ethel Meatplow was I saw them yeah. perform in New oh. Orleans when I lived there in the early 90s. That's oh, when I first man. met Carla. She interviewed oh. me for a magazine she was writing for. Wow. The last time I performed with Carla, 
Um, oh. It was in Amsterdam, and she got shocked by the mic. We had to call the paramedics. Oh, yeah. That's a I thing. Oh, she wow. shocked that's the mic. That's punk rock, yeah. That's no, thing. that's so crazy. Ugh. She yeah, is classic. one of my favorite vocals. So, no. so you're finding all your... Peeps. Yeah, yeah exactly. All, yeah. all your peers and my weirdos, peeps and all yeah. stuff. And are you still ignorant to the fact that your parents are <laughs> running doing the that? biggest How, game? Yeah. Cool. No, because How's okay, my, my, I don't buy it. I'll tell you, my friends had cool parents. My friends had parents that were weirdos and artists, and because and were, of their age, of yeah, course. yeah. And also, I uh, went to elementary school in Laurel Canyon at the um, Wonderland, and yeah. so I have oh, friends. Wait, okay, <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 we're not overlooking Wonderland <laughs> for one minute. We'll come back to that. Go ahead. You, no, my Laurel friends Canyon. had. Yeah, my friends had the cool parents, and so I was the like, drug addicts. Yeah, Artists, I the was musicians. totally. I was jealous of my friends' parent. You know, they would they you could, sleep over at their house? Yeah, a lot? and they were smoking pot and being, you know, having their weird orgies and whoever else and like locked the door. My parents, meanwhile, were like, "All right, you can only watch the Cosby Show and the Golden Girls, and then that's it, and then go to bed." And I, I didn't and have meantime, cool they're selling. Yeah. The you, weren't, you weren't snooping around. My parents, being the good business people they were, had boxes in the garage, and my brothers and I would occasionally see the Sneaking. covers, and you know, it would just be like, "Oh, okay, well, there's." The, all the boxes of the naked guys in the in the garage or you know boxes of other stuff and as soon as we ever would get a glimpse of anything my mom would be like, don't look at that you know so we we're like all right well that's boring you know they had at the breakfast table or whatever you know invoices meanwhile if we looked at the invoices we shipping boxes of dildos and all kinds of poppers whatever by else. the way did, do you have a favorite dildo <laughs> or are there just two men to count Wow. Have you ever heard of the devil's tongue? We'll have to come back to that one. Last (laughs) dildo I'm recommending, but I think they're sold out. All the witches bought them, but carry on. Well, see, the cool thing is that Circus now became Shishi LaRue's, so there's lots of dildos to choose from. And there's a Tom of Finland selection, and wow, they they have some huge ones. So you have a dildo I'm not necessarily a size (laughs) queen, honey. I prefer glass. No, no, I'm not a size queen either, but... um, They do look beautiful. Yeah. They make good paperweights. And I got to say, I got to... I could could plug my, my lover's dildos, so oh, we'll come back to do. that. Well, <laughs> He's got some good ones coming oh, on the market. So. No, so <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> product placement. Well, yeah. plug oh, honey, no, product no, placement. No. Amp, you know, plug the plugs. Some, yeah, plug yeah. the plugs, yeah. Well, you know, no, I, I used to do some ones. reviews for uh-huh. JT Stockroom, and yesterday somebody brought me, Mike Hoffman brought me some boxes of stuff I had at his house. I was very disappointed because in there was the violet wand. Mm. Now, the violet wand is an electrical device that shoots violet sparks of electricity, terrifying anyone. But I realized, I remembered (laughs) I have a piece missing, which is the collet. It's like I need to get some tape so that I can put the glass accessories in that shoot the sparks. It's called the violet wand. We'll get back to that in a minute. And when yeah, you figure well, out what your favorite dildo well, is, you, well, that's what I was going to say. I that. prefer electrical vibra- electric vibrators. No, and I would love to hear all these questions directed to Buck because he's the total world expert on no. all these things. Literally but, uh, coming yeah. next, <laughs> yeah, which is so cool. Okay, uh, yeah. To me, it's interesting. Yeah, so, like a lot of pe- a lot of teenagers find their, like Tim said, their dad's Playboy. Oh, yeah. But finding actually naked men. Oh yeah. I mean how. How many women would have loved to have found that under their dad's pillow? Like, well, oh my God, there's Jeff Schreiker. See, what would happen, it, we would go to the store and my mom would say, just Eyes okay. down dink. Yeah, she'd just say, stand here, don't look at anything. And, right. and as a kid, you know, there was a candy section and we weren't allowed to have candy. That's how strict my mom was. So of course we'd be standing there trying to figure out how we could pocket some candy or just like, okay, this is so cool. But there was these famous swinging doors that said over 18 only. So occasionally my brothers and I would run in and my mom would chase us in there and run us out. And so that was where we caught a real glimpse of what was going yeah. on. You know, and, yeah. and, 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 and how wait, wait, wait a minute, Tim. Yeah. My grandfather had a candy shop oh, cool. that had a wooden American Indian in front of it. You have an over but 18 a, section? No, but, it, but yes, because in the bay, he said, you can go in the candy store and get whatever you want, but don't ever go through those back doors. <laughs> and in those Ooh. back doors were five Italians smoking cigars, gambling. Playing, playing poker, yeah. Playing nice. poker, and boy, I think that's the only time Grandpa ever gave me a licking. All yeah. these things that you're not supposed to see have tremendous influence. I mean, Versace, for instance, walking to church with his grandma, they have to go by the brothels. And he said this was so thrilling to him to seeing these outfits that the prostitutes were wearing. Mm, And and they're they're basically like, look forward, don't look in there. And he just couldn't help but get a little peek. Kit Nativadot, our first podcast, who said she would run to the brothels and run to the burlesque shows knowing from a very early age that's what she wanted to be. 
So you would run into the back room occasionally <laughs> sneaking in. Did you know that eventually that was going to be yours to run? <laughs> Circus of books, then you'd be on your shoulders? All that porn would be, I'd be lo- loading it in. Well, so it's funny. In high school, actually, my mom hired me and my brothers, all of us, to do little odd jobs. And of course- At we least you paid. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't I don't remember getting paid. Now I should follow up on Bitch. that. But, yeah. <laughs> but I remember, you know, I have to like, my job, because I wasn't, I'm not good at admin. So, but for some reason I had to do all the filing. So I would file all the invoices. And I only realized later, my other job was to put the names of all the production companies because they were actually distributing videos. Yep. And so, you know, all the production companies that I was writing were, you know, like Falcon, Raging Stallion, and Catalina. And, you know, I didn't know what I was writing, but I, I looked at it recently. I was like, oh, this is like my teenage writing ha- handwriting on what these files. What a cute files. little uh-huh. secretary yeah. you must have been. You must totally. have been a true punker by that point, right? Blue well, hair, red hair, spiked hair. Totally. What are the, um, well, yeah, no, but in high school, you were asking before, like my friends... At one point, I did say to them, you know, I, all of them had cool parents. And they, they were like, what do your parents do? And I said, well, they run a store. And they were like, what store? And I, I said, Circus of Books. And they were like, what? Rachel, that's where we actually go from the valley. You know, from the valley, you have to make a, a mecca Big to the Circus of Books. Yeah, so they right. were like, we go there. We do like Because we it wasn't only porno trip. they had there. Yeah. They had a lot of kind of different, uh, you know, literary ephemera. Totally. I mean, literary books. They had... Just things you couldn't really get anywhere yeah, else. And it, Bibles as right. well. And Bibles. Is, oh, yeah. <laughs> so An called. anarchist cookbook. And yeah. I, all yeah, that they, fun stuff. They really did have all the cool shit. And so it was... And I mean, it was yeah. notorious. I mean, yeah. it, isn't that the song by ex-adult books oh, yeah, written about circus is. books? You're totally right. I thought yeah. so. No, and and he, um, John Doe, wrote a chapter about living in the building above the store. I didn't know and, that. Yeah, yeah. He lived in the apartment. And I think the Go-Go's, like all, all these awesome, just like bands. I mean, it was the weirdest thing to be like... Okay, my terrible, boring parents who I did not want anything to do with were actually, you know, it was cool, a dissonance. By, according to yeah. other kids, they were cool. According oh, yeah. to you, they sucked. Right. No, my friends were like, that's so, your parents must be like cool leather daddies or something. Nah, I'm like, no, yeah. they're not. Conservative <laughs> Jewish mom. So, can I ask you a question? It. I mean, because yeah. this requires quite a bit of compartmentalization from your family. <laughs> you live a fairly free life. Do you, does that concept of like kind of compartmentalization, do you rebel against that concept? Mm, Do you have an issue with that? Well, you know, I have... I guess I don't have that hardcore anger because I do have a good relationship to them now and right. they and they willingly participated in my movie where I could expose them. For, and your movie and, is a documentary well, on the circus of books. Yeah. But, so, I, want, but I want to hear yeah. what, you, what you have to say about this because yeah. I sometimes, especially with certain countercultures, they're actually almost very righteous about you got to be as open about all oh, this yeah. stuff and then other people Honey, like look the, at like her. The, they <laughs> like the compartmentalization and sometimes people fetishize the compartmentalization. Totally. On the one hand, I'll say that. Maybe Maybe anger isn't the right word. It's irritation. I'd be so irritated with okay. my mom. Like, why are you, even to this day, I'm like, why do you act like you've never seen a dildo before? Miss Come Christine on. <laughs> yeah. ain't buying it, no, mom. Right. She, and how many yeah. of them has she tried? I'm going to reveal that. And you know what? If you're so uptight, maybe you need to stick a big one right up that ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. I don't know if I want to actually visualize that, but at the same time. I do. <laughs> It's nice. It's so funny. I'm like, you know, she'll always, even in the movie, you'll hear her be like, well, we never watched any of these movies. You know, I'm like, I, you know, maybe, is that bullshit? Well, it's actually, yeah. I, I, cause they had to, I remember when they were, um, decide. Well, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, and and but on the other hand, so my dad always sits there with a little grin on his face, like, oh, come on, you know, Karen, this is ridiculous. So I guess I always had him to play off of her. Since that is already compartmentalization, but that's what we all do about a lot of things anyway, no matter how open we are. Yeah. We have to put some things in certain boxes. Even if they're not being shipped out to the valley or 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 Pennsylvania or everywhere (laughs) else. Exactly. (laughs) Just while we're on the compartmentalization thing, you know, your mom's an interesting character in the whole movie. Maybe the most interesting character in a lot of ways. I was talking to our mutual friend Daniel this morning, and the thing we both didn't get is your parents would go around and say they owned a bookstore. No one said, you know, which bookstore. (laughs) That's actually funny because we were under very strict instructions. 
if ever it came up at any point, but especially in school with teachers, you know, like Parents' Day and Ugh. stuff, do not say the name of the store. And I remember one teacher prodded it out of me because I, you know, my mom Devilish. would be like, yeah, she'll like, don't even say that we own a bookstore. Say it's a store yeah. or say we're in real estate. Like, that's good. We're, or CEOs. I remember one time I was like, tell them where your parents are CEOs. Like, Which oh, yeah. means nothing to nobody <laughs> right, in that right, age right. anyway. Yeah, yeah a CEO. So um, one time my third grade teacher was like, come on, I, I've heard... They, if it's a bookstore, I've heard of it. I, Rachel, Ugh. just tell me the name. Finally, I was like, all right, why not? Because I think the name is cool, Circus of Books. And I remember the teacher gave me, yeah, that look, sure, her eyes open. Exploded. It was like, wow. And it, it was, and then I told my mom, mom, oh, I told furious. Mrs. Douglas that the name of the store, my mom, why did you do that? Oh my God, I told you never do that. And it didn't dawn on me because I was in, in third, third grade. grade. Like, why shouldn't she know? But my mom was so freaked out. And I do think now, in retrospect, it was because that was also the beginning of the AIDS epidemic. Okay. And I remember at school they were like okay there's something going on called AIDS and you all have to be aware that don't talk about it and you know to elementary school kids it was like but my parents were really in the center of it of so the, the whole thing of in third grade, I don't know, I would have been like uh, 10 maybe. So had they found out that my parents were in the center of the eight, they well, might have not. There's a lot of hysteria going yeah, on. Yeah, they might have not let me come back to school. That's right. I don't know, my mom was just panicked or they might have called Child Protective Did Services. Did the teacher treat or, you differently at, at that point? Do you remember? I don't remember because I was just also a kid. Yeah, you know, I was right. just absorbed in my kid Were, things, were you so. aware when the raids started? Under oh. the, the Mies uh, so, Manifesto of God. Mania. And, God. Yeah, so to talk about a double life, like your question, this is what does amaze me, that my parents were under federal investigation yeah. and had an FBI, FBI file. file. Yeah. Because totally. it was so yeah. much, and yeah. I mean, at that point, is really when the, the Mies uh, Mania, yeah. Yeah. And, really, and, and as if pornography is the devil, yeah. when really... It's a relief for most people. Well, oh, totally. It's a therapy. I mean, and, really. And it, look, the, the goal yeah. of pornography is twofold. Make money, make people come. <laughs> Where is the problem? Right. And, and it comes in waves. It's like you have the early 70s, you have all the uh, obscenity laws, and then, you know, Carter goes down, and then it comes swelling back totally. again. Yeah. And so you don't really know when that's going to Were you aware of the federal investigation? So, I mean, you're yeah. a kid. You're living in this family yeah. pretending to be conservative. Yeah. Here's mom, the perfect Jewish mother, except, you know, she's <laughs> irritating the hell out of you. <laughs> and how old are you when this came down were you aware no so what's really amazing is that i only found out long after i left i was gone when did you, you know? leave well i left home at 18 or had high you school. waited a long time Boom. yeah i was just done as soon as i could finish high school i left i think i was just poking around asking questions and my mom sort of casually mentioned, oh, well, you know, we did have a, a federal like indictment. Yeah, yeah investigation. Indictment. And, Not and, only an investigation, yeah, an indictment. Right, right, an indictment. We almost went to jail, you know, all that stuff. Thanks, so I'm mom. Like, yeah, and I'm like, when did that happen? So apparently it all went down the night of my older brother's bar mitzvah. He was, oh, hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> he was actually going to have his bar mitzvah the next day and the day before. And that night they got served with a full on. So my parents could have almost not attended <laughs> the bar mitzvah. And your mom and, would have been devastated. Stated. Right, right. The whole thing was like so Jewish. You're like, oh my God, Micah's bar mitzvah. Why did it happen right now? You know. So and dad, the pled, people performing dad, <laughs> dad pled guilty because pleading yeah. guilty, even if you're not, is often yeah. easier and gets you off than going to fight a bullshit false right. accusation. Right. Well, and it's kind of funny. Every time I've screened the movie... It's all been very eye-opening to me to see audience reactions because people always die laughing when my mom said, well, one of us was going to have to be going to jail and it had better be Barry. And everyone laughed so hard. And I was like, wow, everyone laughed so hard because clearly she's the mastermind <laughs> behind the business. He's the fall guy. He's just like the sidekick. <laughs> so, oh, goes, exactly. so I'm like, wow, you're like the brains behind the operation. And she's he's the well, front And you man. know, mom was a pretty good criminal because <laughs> don't tell anybody what you do, not even your own children. Totally. Okay? You can avoid it. No. I mean, that's how criminals get caught. Yeah. But they got caught because there was a countrywide sting going on for anything that was sexually explicit. Oh, my God. And the most interesting thing is that when you look at when I found the FBI file where it said the actual names of the videos that got shipped to the Middle District of Pennsylvania, by today's standards, they were the most Nothing. tame, oh, right. soft core, yeah, yeah, like yeah. daddy's plaything, part one. Yeah, you know, yeah, they yeah, just. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> the investigation, yeah. yeah, that was 1991. So it oh. was actually on the cusp of Bush, yeah, the yeah. first Bush. A lot later than, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it was, no, it was Reagan going into Bush when, when that Mies thing got really, and then Bush's people took it and ran with it. And, and they were, 
there were these little district attorneys that wanted to make a name for themselves by being like perfect Christians. So always the most perverted people. <laughs> out totally. There. Yeah. The thing is, you know, always. these judges. I, when I hear about like the obscenity laws yeah. and the judges, they ha- they're gauging what is actually obscene or not, yeah. and they're watching hours of this oh, shit totally. so they engage. It's like, oh, what yeah. the fuck is going well, on that here? is actually my mom's favorite thing to pull out. She'll be like, you know, when we sent in the materials, we sent the cops, you know, 20,000 copies of X, Y, and Z, and now they're all mysteriously gone. Where did they go? You know, the judges, the cops, everyone seems to have confiscated the materials. I, I so. don't know if it was around that period, and I'm going to have to research exactly what year it was, but you know, when Tipper Gore came yeah. in with the record labeling. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I was 85? Well, 86? I don't know, because yeah. and, and when the dead Kennedys were trying, they were trying to bust them for the artwork that wasn't even theirs, H.R. Giger. And I debated Jack Thompson, who was the lawyer for Tipper Gore when they were trying to instigate record labeling. Oh, crazy. And I debated him at the University of Richmond. And of course, wow. here you are with these Christian white wingers as if, I'm not even against labeling, but I'm against the morality that's behind it as if pornography or rap music or heavy metal music. Of it. yeah. It's a reflection of society. Totally. It provides yeah. relief for people that can't do what they would, or can't say what they would like to. And my argument with him was, there is nothing more violent than the Bible. Can oh, we totally. not blame your God and Jesus <laughs> on all of the abuse he murdered his only begotten oh son? Yeah. What about Greek tragedy? So porn and totally. rap and heavy metal do not inspire this violence. Man is naturally violent. Man yeah. is naturally a rapist. Man is a murderer. Yeah. And you have your fucking gods to blame for totally. it. So don't blame two live crew, the dead Kennedys, <laughs> totally. or porno. <laughs> Hats, or Jeff Stryker. off to that. Well, no, and to that point, if you look at like the Old Testament, you open it up and there's like oh, stoning. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, you're like, okay, if your wife has so much as, you know, glanced at the neighbor, you can take her out and stone well, her anybody to Anybody that or reads. abortion, too, right, throwing right. babies off a cliff. Anybody that yeah. reads Marvel comics, and yeah. the original one was the Bible, good luck, motherfuckers, because yeah. you're screwed from yeah. the. Yeah. My father, not at all religious, sexual maniac, door to door Bible salesman for a while. <laughs> Big, beautiful, wow. gilded. Books with incredible illustrations could have been one of Ron Athey's performance Totally. Books. Well, I was going to say, you know, the NEA thing that happened with Ron. Athey, with Ron Athey. Just all of it was so insane. At that period. Yeah, everything they were it. trying yeah. to come. And yeah. the thing is, all the people that were trying to come down on these, which are natural freedoms, and yeah. now we take for granted, were the real perverts. Oh, totally. Because totally. yeah. now, now the worst dad in the world, Ed Meese, is going to tell me what to fucking do. Yeah. I totally. don't think so. Yeah. Anyway, when I'm debating Jack Thompson... And the text of that is in my triple CD, Crimes Against Nature release of That's Spoken so cool. Word. Wow. The fire alarm went off and they tried, because it was like as if somebody was trying to shut me down. I'm like, I'm going to oh, keep cool. fucking talking. Wow. And there was no greater performance in my life. Because how are you going to win yeah, against me? <laughs> how about a low five? So, so you, you have the government uh, yeah. harassing, but there's also some real Larry Flint got shot. There's some oh, real yeah. maniacs out there. The only man I've and ever voted for. Were your parents also nervous about just crazy Christian vigilantes and uh, and that as well, or they didn't even let it. You know, that's so interesting. Well, I think you look at shit today, Buck and I were just watching this brutal documentary about a real child abuse, and then people call Child Protective Services for all kinds of reasons, and I think my mom's real fear was that somebody would just call Child Protective right. Services and be like, take these kids away, these people are pornographers. So I think as a mom, her big thing is being a mom, the ultimate mom. So whatever, you know, kind of like mama bear, I'll take care of the kids at all costs. So I think her big thing was that the kids could be taken away. So are you implying that your your, your mom <laughs> basically trying to hide it wasn't to keep you pure, but it was for her own selfish drive of keeping you as children herself? Exactly. No, I think she was And can fearful. you blame her? Yeah. yeah no. No, you can't blame her. Yeah, no, the hysteria was like, okay, well, also you have to remember like the time was homophobic culture. You know, it was like everything was anti-gay too. It was just, uh, you read the newspaper and the president, the way they were actually full on homophobes. So my parents were just in the center of being pro-gay and on the side of people with AIDS in the 80s. Yeah. And, and, and so and how do you really, yeah. how do you really come out as that? I mean, you have yeah. to take a stance, but how much of a stance can you take? A- exactly. Without having, you know, stones thrown through your front window and yeah. shotguns aimed at your left eye. No, and the store did have, um, they had, uh, they had random acts of violence. Exactly. The, the, the clerks would get beat up. Yeah. They had bricks thrown in the window. Yeah. I mean, it was just actual straight yeah. up homophobic I'm lucky that nobody targets. really got shot there. Yeah. No, it was, what I it love was is that the fact that Circus Books 
behind it, Vaseline Alley. <laughs> hey, I should do. I should do the, the ro- I should do the Rod Stewart cover of Gaseline Alley. Yeah, change it to Vaseline Alley. Alley. Oh, yeah. 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 Talking, no, yeah. totally. <laughs> <laughs> the good old That's days. That's yeah. Alley, where I started from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my totally. God. So we have other countries. Yeah. I had bricks thrown my windows in my dad's place. So we'll talk about that later. Oh, wow. but, yeah, Let's go back to Wonderland yeah. Avenue for a minute, because you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. And people, I mean, first of all, film Wonderland Avenue. Talk about that for a minute. But people that weren't here or don't know, and also Boogie Nights relate somewhat. So the, the murder in Boogie Nights... And Wonderland Avenue, which is a, a better depiction of what happened on Wonderland Avenue. And I don't know how old you were, if you were hanging around that time, but Eddie Nash. I was Nash, a child. I was a kid. Eddie Nash yeah. used to book a lot of clubs, the Starwood, where a lot of punk bands played. And John Holmes was involved in this really big coke. Um, murder. Murder. Mystery, uh, mysterious. And, wow. Well, but, inspiring. Right, well, really nice. But, and, and Wonderland Avenue, which is a great film with Val Kilmer. But more and equally as interesting was Chuck Negron of Three Dog Night. Oh, boy. The best Ooh. rock bio, Three Dog Nightmare. Has had was a there long... every single night, except the night there was the murder that went shit? down. That His guy. wife found the bodies. Chuck Negron, he somehow skates around. He just somehow comes out well, ahead. No, so no, no. It's, it's, Look, they sold 80 million records of songs they did not write. He ended up with a duffel bag and a heroin addiction, going into rehab 38 times. <laughs> Wonderland Avenue. Still Eddie alive. Nash. I don't know what happened to him in the end investigate the film and Boogie Nights. I mean, that's where you were growing up, oh, sister. Oh, totally. Sister well, see, wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, it's, it's crazy, though, because I hear these stories, as, and I, I actually, my whole, you know, you, the Dead Kennedys, the world of punk and amazing, crazy shit, I had to find out about and then read about in, the, like, history books, basically, that you've written, you know, that you guys have all been a part of, but I was a kid. And so my friends' parents were really cool. <laughs> they were the ones doing Into coke the with all shit. these people. Oh. Yeah. No, my parents were not cool and interesting because they weren't doing enough drugs but they were making a lot of money (laughs) yeah on the backs of um, yeah no they were just you know sending us to college with hard cash you went to college I did for what well so I went to UCLA for art I'm an an art school kid and and what kind of art were you making I started out as an artist, visual artist, doing the whole academic-y thing yeah. where you where you study yeah, your yeah. people, like yeah. Ron, who's over here. Totally. And then, um, you know, I always loved- That would loved, be Ron Athey? Yeah, that would be Ron. house we're recording in? Yeah, exactly. But really, like his work totally influenced me and a generation of other LA, I mean, global artists, but LA specifically, anyone that cared at all. What about inspired you um, about yeah. Ron Athey's work? Oh, man, uh, where to begin? I was uh, like- 16, I got accepted into this thing called Cal State Summer School for the Arts, which was at Cal Arts. And that's when I learned about performance art. And and it was just amazing to realize, oh, wow, there was this world of people. Ron Athey, Karen, Karen Finley. Karen Finley, Vaginal Davis, all of the, you Who know, Who really epic, expanding yeah, the boundaries totally. of what was acceptable. And your work, I would say, fully in that genre. And not on the West Coast, but like yeah. there was a... So I didn't have direct access, but I started to go to Highways Performance Art Space. I and, think I did something oh, there so once. I'm sure, yeah. Oh, yeah so, so anything that sort of passed through Highways, I became like a devotee. Like that was my church, you know, it was to just follow those artists. What better than the church of the Pope <laughs> Ron Athey? That's exactly, what I always yeah. say. No, so, Throwing so, a little vaginal, da- vaginal cream Davis. Yeah, no, that really was my church. And then actually there was a documentary about Ron um, that I, I, I don't remember how old I was when I saw it, but it was like, Wow, and then Kathy Opie and all these artists Amazing that were just photographer yeah. that did a lot of the photographic work with totally Ronnie. yeah the, so now the you underground your, now you subculture. Here I am, and here's my people. Yeah, and then Let I my w- people come <laughs> became yeah. your motto. Totally, and then I I was just you know I also as was was also a very shy loner you weirdo. Were. Yeah, as we no. you, 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 can't tell now. Like, you can't tell now, but I was you gotta and, come out of so, your shell eventually. So yeah, I, I secretly you know obsessed over all of these amazing artists, and I just didn't have the balls to do a whole lot myself but I went to UCLA and I studied with all these balls great started artists. growing yeah my balls started growing and then I <laughs> and then I did the the less ballsy thing of continue to do academia and I applied to get an MFA and I went to Yale so yet again I got even more you education from, you, you did how about, yeah. how about this yeah. a gay pornographer <laughs> salesman's daughter goes to Yale people there totally. is hope but not totally. for us you got to the art department yeah. for uh, grad school at Yale yeah it's sculpture and incredible you know, that's a very 
well, very, very prestigious I art know, school. Very so. sneaky yeah. intelligentsia yes, we're sneaky. sitting next yeah. to. Yeah. And you came but, back to L.A., interesting, because well, don't, don't you usually go to, that's the trajectory yeah, of New you York. Yeah, you go to New York. York. No, yeah. and I actually hated L.A., because when I, you know, I loved my people of L.A., but when it came to uh, thinking about the art world, and I just, well, not hated, but I wanted to be, Look, you were you here know, your whole yeah. life. Son yeah. <laughs> Al Goldstein's yeah. son yeah. went to Harvard Law School. He had to go there to protect the dirty dad. But Al Goldstein was not invited to his graduation. He had to alienate everyone. I wouldn't invite him either. Wow. I mean, he yeah. was a sleazy scumbag well, that did that made sex kind of shitty. But you know, people like that kind of dirty <laughs> dad. He, he crap. knew what he was doing. His monologue yeah, at the end. He was, was like, a fucking money maker. Oh, he was. He was. He was fun. I mean, you know, to me, I have a, a lot more respect for Larry Flint, but then I well, always did. So my favorite, like my favorite Yale story was you're a sleazy <laughs> cocksucker on the weekend. No, <laughs> no but my, the, my, my, my the highlight of my Yale experience was I I was there during the height of the Bush era. Oh God. And and I was making sculpture. G-W. Yeah, G.W. Yeah. G. Bush. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was thinking about how all those motherfuckers went to Yale. Oh, yes. oh, they, and, and it yeah. was weird for me as a little West Coast kid being in the heart of darkness on the East Coast. Social Darwinism. And, yeah, totally evil place. And so I was making political art, political sculptures. And I, I made a sculpture called Kissing President Bush of myself kissing the evil president. And it actually was a big deal. And it got on the cover of the New York Times oh, art section. Congratulations. Oh. Congratulations. Did you, did you place it? It should have been him kissing your fucking ass. I know, totally. Well, it was, Turn around. It was, it was this moment when um, they were just trying to talk about how artists were fighting back. And so what was cool, though, was when I, when I was at Yale, I invited Larry Flint. And he came and he My spoke. Hero. And he was such a badass because he flew himself out there and he spoke at the church. And then I get a call the day that... And I was, I'm was i actually good at organizing shit. So I got it all together, got the New Haven Police Department nice. to escort him and cool. everything. And then the day of... The event, I get a call from the Reverend, who I think he had a funny name like Reverend Smalls or Reverend Friendly, whatever. It was a weird it name. Wasn't Reverend it was Reverend Biggie Smalls. Yeah, that would have been it great. It was hilarious. His name. He was like, "Hello, this is Reverend whatever." I heard that you were the person that organized this event today, and I need to tell you, it is not happening. And I said to him, "Well, actually, it is happening. Larry Flint is on his way. The New Haven Police Department, yes, all the home. students are coming." And he was like, "Well, who who okayed this?" And I was like, "All your department heads." And he was like, "Well, nobody informed me about it." Too bad. And then he gets off the phone. And I tell my friend, I was like, "Oh my god, I got the I got this weird call from the head reverend of the Battelle Chapel." And my friend was like, "Are you serious, Rachel? You know that's George Bush's personal uh-huh. minister." Uh-huh. And I was like, "Yeah." And so, uh, so Larry Flint comes down, and you know his big thing is also to take down the Republicans, oh, oh, yeah. which is so well, cool. Why is my hero? Right, right, yeah. Look, I mean, the thing yeah. about Larry Flint. For those yeah. who don't know, Hustler Magazine, the man took a bullet for freedom. Yeah, totally. I mean, whatever you think about the pornography within Hustler, he's yeah. always been going after the lies that politicians breed. He's published exactly. some of my story. He published my story oh, on cool. Dominic Strauss Kahn. Wow. That's right, Larry Flynn. Cool. Only man I voted for. And look, wow, that's uh, to awesome. me, it's not. Let's go back to his most icon of Hustler was the woman in a meat grinder. <laughs> right. And the thing is, people don't yeah. get that is meaningful on multiple levels. That's how most countries, the world views women. Not necessarily how he views women. That's He's a great actually, point. Yeah. I actually think that that kind of pornography is elevating women to goddess statue. Nobody's being forced into posing for magazines that they're getting paid for. Yeah. And especially at that period, it was showing all different kinds of women in their fucking glory. And he was That's totally so cool. anti censorship. And yeah. People can complain about pornographers all they want, but at that period, pornography, I mean, whether you're talking about Hugh Hefner was soft, he still had Playboy After Dark. Early pornographers <laughs> did a lot to advance <laughs> totally. culture and intellect. All yeah. the interviews in Playboy. I don't care about soft car bunny girls with big boobs. Yeah. Pornographers of that era, and including your parents, yeah. were doing a lot for sexual freedom, doing a lot for people just to advance, to become who they were, and to embrace what should be fucking natural and normal which totally. is in almost every other country, which is sex. Not well, every, well, Europe, but yeah. in America, sex, so taboo, still used to sell everything. Totally. And, then, and now with the explosion of the internet, it's just gone haywire and who the yeah, fuck yeah, knows. So yes, yes and no. And, and this has been a tug of war since the beginning of America because early polygamists were coming here just like the relig- the people who were coming here for the religious freedom. No, no, no. no. They and, were and, coming. And they so, wait, wait, wait. They were not coming here for religious freedom. They were coming here to be religious fanatics. Well, fine, fine, fine. That's another... That's another... Oh, carry on. And so... 
you exist, your family exists, just like the religious fanatics exist. And there's that tension. Sexual fanatics. <laughs> that tension that's always happened. And yeah. there's waves. I mean, GW it went nuts after the wardrobe malfunction at a halftime performance. <laughs> right. And then suddenly everyone's like, where's the moral fabric of America? Oh, it's like, yeah. Yeah. And here, here's the moral right. fabric of America. Right. It is fine to kill millions of people the totally. world over. Exactly. damn you, if you're going to show people enjoying themselves having sex, totally. that is the immoral fabric there of America. Yeah. And not have health care. For people, oh right, oh, yeah, God. we can go. Yeah, yeah all no. that stuff. And and so, well, you know, it's a good. I'm so glad you brought up the meat grinder thing, only because I, when I brought Larry Flint to Yale, it actually was the first time I recognized how I did have to stand up for what my parents had fought for, and I got my biggest pushback came from, you know, of course, the Reverend, but then it also came from the feminist theorist. Wow. Honey, oh, tell me about up, it. One of my favorite artists who just walked up and was like, Rachel, you know what? I cannot believe you of all people invited Larry Flint. You know, he has that image of the meat grinder. And I was like, can't you be able to look at this with a little bit of depth? In fact, I'm so glad that you said it because it's important to hear women say that, that oh, actually look, this, make this it one that. Right here, well, yeah, uh, this, exactly. one right this one right okay, here. You're not just a woman, but I... <laughs> I mean, it, you know, after this Me yeah. Too thing, uh, Lydia had a speech that was critical of many angles. She was basically, well, she was basically like, yeah. listen, yeah. I've been consistent my whole life. I've been attacked my by men. My first spoken word was get, called... Now I get attacked by women. My first spoken right. word was called Daddy Dearest. I was going after the trauma base to begin with. Mm. And I don't want to go too much into the yeah. Me Too movement or even the Me You movement. <laughs> but the thing is, wow. people have nice. to understand. I mean, what bothers me is that women are being beheaded, sold into sexual slavery. They're being beaten daily. They're, in, they're sold, they're prostituted, they're murdered. And some bitches complain about getting her ass grabbed or cat called on the street. Now that is just a minor, minor symptom of the bigger problem. And the bigger problem is the patriarchy still runs and rules this fucking world. They are a destructive force that wants death and profit at all cost. And the profit means the death of individuality, sexual freedom, and anybody who is other. So the problem is not yeah. a man grabbing your ass. If you cannot turn around and grab his balls and squeeze, you haven't learned a fucking thing. <laughs> and you know what? Look, wow, of, course there's ex- <laughs> of course there's exploitation. There is not equality. We as females should understand our natural superiority and rise above the petty bullshit. Men come out of the pussy. Of course they want to go back in. No wonder they're fucking dogs. <laughs> I see a bear in a cage. I don't go into it. That's all I'm saying is learn to protect yourself, women, and bitches that have babies better tell their children their son's respect and their daughter's protection. The world ain't going to change because you want it to. It is not safe. You are not safe. Even in your own house, that's why all women, I'm sorry to say it, you should be armed. Ball-peen hammer, gun, whatever it takes, you should feel safe in your own house. Because you know what? Abuse begins at home. So there was one other thing that, man, just to throw it out there, because it's so cool to hear... um, Lydia support Flint so much you know he also because of being just a straight up pornographer was ahead way ahead of the curve on LGBT shit like he right and and yeah and I didn't even know it but it's because he simply was open minded just like my parents like are people gonna buy this okay cool that was his response to each their own he's a libertarian he's like you know what if people want it awesome. They want to buy it. Is there a market for it? Great. We'll do it. And so that was what was so cool and forward thinking about Larry Flint too. And just, it wasn't just women. It was like, all right, there's gay people. I don't care. I'll publish that magazine. And so that's the other little thing. People don't realize Larry Flint was a total early gay rights activist. Yeah. Your parents were leaders in the pornography world to some extent. So all over the country, there were all kinds of different people like Larry Flint. I think there was Ruben Sturman. Mm, yeah, my parents know him. <laughs> they you know, know Ruben? They, yeah, my parents know everybody. So they and knew they, all these yeah, people. They, and they knew all the ones that went to jail. And, yeah. you know, and I know him by the first name, like, oh, yeah, Ruben. And, and I would interview my parents and be like, oh, you know this guy. And well, they he, just... He, yeah, to, he escaped from jail. Oh yeah, no, they and and it's interesting though. My mom, um, when she talks about um, Chuck Holmes, for instance, like she admires the hell out of these people, and so she she'll just be like, "Oh, these people were heroes to them, and and they knew them personally." And so it's interesting that my goody two shoes mom, on the one hand, will say a certain thing to me, and then I hear her. There's not a single person in the industry that they don't know or don't know personally or don't know exactly how they died. They were so with everybody in this industry. What, then what about also like on the, I, I know in New York, the gay bars were run by the mob. I mean, oh yeah. Did they have interaction? 
Yeah, there yeah, was a total question. no. There was a total mob uh, mob scene here in L.A. And when my parents first got into the business, the mob tried to sh- shut them down because uh, the mob was like, "Who is this random couple that suddenly got you know this important doing story? With d- distribution yeah, and all that stuff?" Yeah. yeah, totally. And so they they had run ins with the mob early on. But this is also you know my my mom is tough as hell, and I didn't realize she you know just withstood it all. And you know my dad was kind of like, "All right, we could do this. We'll we'll figure it out." And so the two of them just powered through but they were real outsiders now the documentary is out it's going to be on netflix yeah and it's a very important part of la sexual history and a fight for freedom on all fronts and here you are now an artist make yeah. movies yeah doing what the fuck you want okay well cool i'm so happy about this movie and you were asking me what was i doing before i made the movie well i was an artist and i still am but i wrote the end credit song for the film i'm a musician a songwriter and i love to play shows glad, and my heroes I'm, I'm are people you, i'm like glad you got your parents yeah. money though because i mean <laughs> i probably ain't gonna get you oh, too far but i'm glad you sold the netflix oh yeah no no seriously it's you know i realized the hard way okay you don't make any money as an artist and you know you do your thing but as but, a pornography yeah. For at one time, <laughs> at that time is over. Yeah. But you got in right at the right time, yeah. To then also document an important part of American history. Totally. And I will say this: you know, had this movie come out maybe ten years ago, it would just be on like the Outfest film festival circuit, LGBT. But because of people like Ryan Murphy in the mainstream TV right. industry, yeah. a gay out gay man. Right. I mean, which is really still putting some pretty, you know, what, like it or lo- love and, or love. Yeah. He's putting out some pretty weird stuff. Totally. And and they're just you know, it's a it's an interesting place because Netflix and the content buyers, when I went into Netflix, you know, I went in and I, I actually had a budget to blur out all the dicks. And I said, you know, I had don't a blur, graphic design. Don't blur the dicks. I know. I said. I figure. I figure if we're. <laughs> I figure if we're here at Netflix, I bet. And this film's gonna, gonna blur sell. The dicks. Yeah, I'm gonna have to blur the dicks out. And and then they were just like, no, no, it's cool. And nice. and I. So that's when I was like, oh wow, you won. okay, you won we, won, we won. We yeah. won. Uh, you know, culture's well, changing, but it is because the the media is changing. And I did come in at the right moment to sell this film. And so yeah, what's next? You know, I still make music. I I love being an artist, and I you know I love. I worship all the great artists that are still alive and kicking doing their thing kicking against and, the fucking bricks yeah no and 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 ryan murphy wants to make the whole film into a tv series nice. which is the craziest yes. thing. so if i have my druthers i'll make sure that the, the, the fictional rachel mason is going to see her favorite artists on stage and if, if we you can need any music exactly. we're right and here and, and, for and sure if you have, if you have any, exactly. any songs, songs no, just come to me who, well that would be what would be real natasha leone except she's like my same age but so i have to get a I, she's I, look, she's I awesome. Really, yeah, I love course. her revival. Yeah. I need I a like Jewish Russian girl. <laughs> I love her revival. Oh, I like I Russian doll. Anyway, congratulations, oh, thanks, sister wife, man. is all I can say. You're doing great. You survived. And you know what? It just goes to prove pornography can be a healthy inspiration. Uh, is there anything else you want to plug? Let's see. Besides plugs? Okay, well, plugs, plugs, plugs plug, besides plugs and plug, butt plugs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> plug the plugs. Uh, let's well, see. Well, isn't that Buck's thing? Yeah, no, I yeah, should ask uh, if Buck might start a line of butt plugs just so we can get this going. No, I'm, get Buck uh, in I'm here sure right he will. Now. I'm going to need a yeah. break between them. But, okay. Yeah. Actually, no, I will say a cool thing about Buck because. Say a cool thing. Yeah, because, you know, really, he was We're part. We're talking about Buck Angel. Yeah, so, so he was part of that group of really important iconoclastic people that oh. I <laughs> he might be sleeping <laughs> oh no just dozing okay. in the corner I worshipped all the people that came before me and it was like amazing when the film was just I thought of the people I needed to invite to the screening and I was like oh shit Buck Angel's on Instagram and I was seeing how cool he was on, uh, doing all this stuff and so it really meant a lot to me to just be able to um, invite him to the screening and, and to, is that and how you came together that's, as, yeah, that as is friends and more. Amazing. Yep, exactly Amazing. it wow. is and so in a weird way the circus of books which is where i first encountered him back in the day in a magazine was now you know the place where i'm in the center of it again and my my friends have all come through so i i've come and, to and also i think buck angel had some connection to ron athey because dancing the previously in yeah. um club fuck totally stuff like that so again i mean we often talk about how we're so interrelated, even if it takes us this long to meet. Yeah. We might have met briefly one time before, but we are really all, the counterculture is interrelated. Totally. And, and I, we are yeah. there because 
we're not alone. Yeah, and I do think one of the things that might be missing is that I think there's a young, uh, God, I'm, I'm going to sound like a, a cranky old uh, OK Boomer, but I love, everyone cranky says, boomer. Okay. no, but everyone always says like, OK Boomer, but I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? The OK Boomer people are actually the people who's gra- who pave the ground you're stepping on, and I love what, you know, what the, to not just love, but to appreciate and worship what they did for the, L- not just LGBT, but a culture in general. And then there's a strange, like, almost like a um, a missing link in history. So I feel like I'm really lucky that I was able to make a film that actually can say, hey guys. Connects all that. Like, Here's ding, a ding, ding, ding. I, 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 have a th- yeah. I have a theory about that. And yeah. you see it in a lot of the uh, institutions and a lot of colleges, the class divide in this country has gotten so great. And so when people read or go to school and they hear the history of the disenfranchised, the rejected demographics, they know deep down inside they'll never have to make fight that same fight. And they almost synthesize mm. these, these, these struggles to feel like they've actually participated because they'll never really have to fucking do it. That's interesting. Well, that's what I see is that, you know, Buck actually fought a real fight right. like well, 20 years ago. Well, and, you know, the, you, the, know? The, 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 you see a lot of this, uh, the, the word uh, appropriation flow floating around. It's like, well, stop appropriating suffering. You don't fucking own suffering. Half the world doesn't have drinking water. People are being murdered totally. every day for just standing up for the most basic freedoms. Yeah. So it's kind of like, put it in perspective, please, because it's oh, not yeah. fair. You're not hijacking this right yeah, now. Yeah, no, and, and in this country, I mean, you, you go elsewhere, especially, you know, places where they still don't have rights. Hello, like Iran oh, and tons. Africa, tons of countries where the kind of... Uh, youth that just doesn't seem to understand what happened does seem to be a a privileged American youth. We're like, okay, you know, here we are. We're going to now fight against each other and like have anger. Yeah. And, and it's a form of censorship that I'm, I'm shocked. I'm like, you sound more, more, more right wing than the Christian right right now. And you're just trying to tell other people within the community what they can and can't say. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, they are doing that. Yeah. Totally. So, so that's where it's, it's so inconsistent. That's what's so frustrating about it. Yeah. So it's it's a weird thing where you're like you have to remind actual kids like you know what, just be quiet for a second and remember that there was a fight that happened. I'm glad you're doing that. Yeah. So it's it's, it's um, it can be tough. Straight white guy these days. I'm not going to cry back. Right? It's pathetic. But but seriously, it's a challenge for me to even. I have to be. I have to walk on eggshells to even breach such a, a point that well, you're I making. Well, I love sometimes. when Jim no, goes. You important. don't know who my mother was and who Lydia Lunch is because he exactly. brings us up as great inspirations in the fight for what real women are. Right. And the fact that you were not just with women Lydia. that yeah. were born female. Well, see, see, things. Yeah. I have great female role models, and I think a lot of people hate their moms who mm. were maybe weren't. Great female role models and their dads. And, and oh, their that's dads. true. But I'm saying in terms, in terms of the, the, yeah. the women issue, and so so sometimes it, it's projected onto me. I was like, that's not my fucking problem. I actually had incredible role models, and I'm sorry you're having you're struggling with this shit, but you're going against the wrong motherfucker. And if you want to talk about volume versus tongue? Tim will use both against the enemy who is an idiot. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This is the Lydia <laughs> Spam with Lydia Lunch, Tim Dahl, and Rachel Mason. Check out the documentary Circus of Books Netflix. <laughs> You're listening to the Lydian Spin, but then again, I think you knew that. We actually need your help, and I would say trying to serve you better. You really believe that. Actually, we're trying to get some sponsors up so that we can provide you with this fantastic program every Friday for the foreseeable future, which is how long this pandemic is going to last. So if you wouldn't mind just taking three minutes of your time, I mean, what else are you doing today? And filling out the questionnaire, link at the bottom of this page. If you're listening on other platforms, you can simply go to the LydianSpin.net and it'll be at the bottom of the latest episode. As an incentive, one of you will definitely receive a little gift from me. Can't promise what that is now, but I'm sure I'll dig something up. I've got plenty of time to clean up my closets. Thank you for listening to the Lydian Spin.